what you want to do for this trick is just start off with a basic drum sound. For this I just use a kick drum but you can use any sound you really like. Then if you're on Ableton then you can just grab an OTT which is just a multiband compression setting. Then all you want to do is adjust the time and some of the bands a little bit and then basically just duplicate this like a ton of times. Um, there's no real rules for all of this, basically just duplicate a lot of OTTs and I usually go until my CPU starts to crack but I mean you can really do it however many times you really like, it's up to you. Then after you've duplicated it um, a few times it'll come out sounding something like this. So after you're happy with the sound, you can basically just freeze the track, which just bounces it down to audio, and then you can flatten it. This way it just burns itself into the audio and you can play around with the actual track itself. You can try it on any drum sound you like, like for example I tried it on a tom. Let's hear what some of these sound like in a little drum beat that I wrote. So now let's try it on some vocals, like here's a little vocal sample that I tried it on. So after you've done all this, you can chop up like little segments of the vocal. Um, like for example, I'm going to chop up a little segment of the vocal here. And then you can put it in something like this. So for this next sound design tip, I'll be talking about gates. And I think that gates are actually a pretty underrated plugin in Ableton or just in general. I've actually found that you can use them in some ways that you can get some cool rhythms and some weird effects out of them. So basically all you need to do is lay out like a sustained sound. This can be like a synth. Um, for me, I'm gonna use this chord progression from this synth that I use called Simplant. Then after you've written down like a little chord progression or something, then you just want to create another MIDI track and write some weird rhythms or patterns like what I've done with this one here. So this pattern right here is on a separate MIDI track, which is going to be what triggers our gate for the synth. So if you're on Ableton, you can search for a gate and then apply it to your synth track and then click this arrow which will bring out the sidechain folder then click on sidechain and route your audio to the track that has the weird rhythm that you've written out so I've named mine sidechain just because it's easier to find and it makes more sense then basically just adjust your settings on the gate to look something a bit like this you can experiment a little bit, um, these are just some preset settings that usually work with this. But once you press play you'll see that the rhythm that we wrote out before on that MIDI track actually triggers the rhythm for the synth through the gate.
Now for non-Ableton users there actually is another way to do this without a gate plugin on Ableton and it's probably a better way to do it as well in my opinion. This is the way that I always do it. It's actually by using the Nicky Romero Kickstart plugin or just a volume shaper in general. Any volume shaper really can do this. Like I'm pretty sure LFO tool has a function where you can do this as well and that's a really good way to do it. So basically we can do the same thing and start off with the chords that we used in the last example and apply kickstart or a volume shaper plugin to the synth. Then after you've done this, you just want to select this plucky shape here. It kind of looks like a downward ramp. And as we can hear, this volume shape cuts the audio off early, which makes that plucky sort of sound that we hear. Then after you've attached this to your synth, you want to sidechain this to your rhythm like what we did with the gate plugin. Another cool sound design trick that I actually use quite a lot in my tracks is actually using LFOs to control filter cutoffs. Now that might make no sense and sound confusing but I'll explain this all in a second. So basically all you want to do is start off with some simple chords again or notes of something like a synthesizer. Then you just want to grab an LFO from Ableton's plugin section and apply this to the synth. And then what you want to do is you want to click on this map button and apply it to the frequency cutoff, which is right here on the synth. And here I did the same thing, but this time on a serum preset. And I mapped the LFO to an auto filter, so it's doing the same thing pretty much, just controlling the cutoff of the actual auto filter this time. Thank you. 
So now moving on to the final sound design trick, I'm going to show you how I use fast rate LFOs or just LFOs in general to create little fills and elements that you can use within your track, which just can add a little bit of life and a little bit of movement to your tracks. So we're going to use the same track as an example here. And let's take an LFO tool and apply it to the whole group or part that you want to have the effect on. For this, I'm just going to apply the LFO to the entire track except for the drums and the bass. And then you can make this any shape you like, but for this example, I'm going to make it a plucky shape again. Then after you've made a shape and you've got the audio routing through to the LFO tool, what you want to do is create a separate audio track and then route the audio coming from the LFO tool to this audio track. This is just so that we can record this output to a separate audio track. This way we don't have to deal with automating the actual LFO tool. And since I only have the demo version, the LFO tool will actually expire. But if I record it to a separate audio track, then it can't expire. And then basically after you've done this, all you want to do is just hit record and you'll see that it starts recording the output to this separate audio track. 